Hello students, this is part two on your lecture for Head and Neck, Chapter 8. The hard palate consists of the primary palate and the secondary palate. The primary palate is the anterior portion, which includes the incisor bearing region, the rugae, and the incisive papilla. The secondary palate consists of the palatine processes of the maxillary bone and the palatine raphe. The junction of the hard and soft palate can be palpated and there are small depressions on each side that contain the fovea palatini. Between them, the posterior nasal spine may be palpated. The soft palate begins at the fovea palatini and terminates at the uvula. The oral pharynx is the middle part of the pharynx situated behind the oral cavity. The palatine tonsils are located between the anterior and posterior tonsillar pillars. Other names for the anterior pillar is the anterior fascial pillar or the palatoglossal arch. Other names for the posterior tonsillar pillars is the posterior fascial pillars or the palatopharyngeal arch. On the floor of the mouth, we see the sublingual sulcus, which is a depression between the tongue and the alveolar bone. The sublingual fold, also known as the plica sublingualis, covers the sublingual gland. The lingual frenulum attaches the tongue to the floor of the mouth. The sublingual caruncle is the where you find the opening of the submandibular duct. The alveololingual sulcus is an alternate name for the sublingual sulcus. This term refers to the depression between the tongue and the alveolar bone. The dorsum of the tongue consists of the body, which makes up two thirds, and the root, which makes up one third of the tongue. The sulcus terminalis or terminal sulcus is a V-shaped depression that separates the anterior from the posterior portions of the tongue. The lingual tonsils are posterior to the terminal sulcus and the valate or circumvallate papilla are anterior to the terminal sulcus. Filiform papillae are the most numerous. They are slender, they do not contain taste buds, and they assist in the formation of a bolus of food. These are filiform papillae. The fungiform papillae are red mushroom shaped buds that are scattered on the surface and do contain taste buds. The valate or circumvallate papillae, there are seven to 11 in number and they are anterior to the sulcus terminalis. They are very large and contain numerous taste buds. You can also see fungiform papillae scattered on the surface that look like little red bumps. Foliate papillae are columnar folds of tissue on the side of the tongue. These also contain taste buds and you can see some fungiform papillae on the dorsum of the tongue adjacent to the folate. The lingual tonsil is found posterior to the sulcus terminalis. They may be found on the dorsum of the tongue, but usually they are seen laterally. 
Lingual tonsils consist of lymphoid tissue and they are part of the immune system. They may become red and enlarged as you see here. The lateral wall of the mouth. You can see the pterygomandibular fold here and the pterygotemporal depression here. The pterygomandibular fold and the pterygotemporal depression lie medial to the mandibular ramus. The pterygotemporal depression is a landmark for local anesthesia of the mandible. The pterygomandibular fold is the mucosa which covers the pterygomandibular raphe. The raphe is the common connective tissue attachment of the superior constrictor and buccinator muscles. Every muscle has an origin and an insertion. The origin is the fixed attachment while the insertion moves when the muscle contracts. Most muscles are named based on their origins and insertions. The origin of the mylohyoid muscle is the mylohyoid line of the mandible, and the insertion is the midline raphe and the hyoid bone. Mylohyoid. The action of the mylohyoid muscle is to elevate the tongue and the floor of the mouth. It forms a sling, which is the floor of the mouth. It is innervated by the mandibular nerve. This illustrates an inferior view of the mylohyoid, which also shows the digastric muscle, which is a muscle of the neck. It also shows the hyoid bone. The geniohyoid originates in the genial tubercles of the mandible on the interior aspect of the mandible. They are also known as the mental spine, so the origin, genio. So it must insert on the hyoid bone, which it does. So you can see the geniohyoid muscle originating in the genial tubercles and inserting in the hyoid bone. Its action is to elevate the hyoid and depress the mandible. It is innervated via C1 via the hypoglossal nerve, which is cranial nerve 12. This shows a superior view of the mylohyoid muscle as well. Note that the sling is formed by the mylohyoid and its origin in the internal ridge of the mandible. The hyoglossus muscle originates on the hyoid bone and inserts into the tongue, glossus for tongue. Its action is to lower the tongue in the floor of the mouth. The styloglossus originates in the styloid process and inserts into the tongue. Its action is to elevate and retract the tongue. Neither of these muscles is attached to the mandible. The genioglossus muscle is the largest of the tongue. It originates in the mental spines and inserts in the tongue. Its action is to protrude the tongue. An extrinsic muscle is a muscle that has its origin outside the tongue. All of these muscles are extrinsic muscles. Styloglossus, styloid, tongue. Hyoglossus, hyoid, tongue. Genioglossus, genial tubercle, tongue. Mylohyoid, mylohyoid line, and the hyoid bone. Innervation of the tongue muscles is via the hypoglossal nerve, cranial nerve 12. 
intrinsic muscles are muscles that originate and insert within the tongue itself. There are two longitudinal muscles, the superior and the inferior. The superior curls the tongue superiorly. The inferior curls the tongue inferiorly. Horizontal or transverse muscle narrows the tongue while the vertical muscles broaden and flatten the tongue. These are also innervated by the hypoglossal nerve. This is a recap on the muscles of the tongue. Intrinsic muscles are confined to the tongue and are not attached to bone. They consist of longitudinal, transverse, and vertical fibers. And the nerve supply comes from the hypoglossal nerve. They alter the shape of the tongue. Extrinsic muscles are attached to bones and the soft palate. They include the genioglossus, hyoglossus, styloglossus, and palatoglossus, and they are also innervated by the hypoglossal nerve. Movements of the tongue. Protrusion is accomplished with the genioglossus muscles on both sides acting together. Retraction is accomplished by the styloglossus and hyoglossus muscles on both sides acting together. Depression is done by the hyoglossus muscles on both sides acting together. Retraction and elevation of the posterior third is accomplished by the styloglossus and palatoglossal glossus muscles on both sides acting together. Changing the shape of the tongue is accomplished by the intrinsic muscles. Our classroom exercise will be to make a chart of the muscles of the tongue, both intrinsic and extrinsic. You will be making charts of all the muscles that we learn in this class. This exercise will be done in the classroom after this lecture is complete. You will list the name, origin, insertion, action, innervation of all the muscles of the tongue, and the last column will be for any other information that may be relevant, such as alternate names for the muscles. This concludes this lecture on Chapter 8, Head and Neck Anatomy, Part 